Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session and for spending the next hour with us. Today, we are going to cover how to use Nine data apps deployed on our new product, Nine Business Hub, in order to empower self-service analytics. We will show you how to create these data apps and how to deploy them on Nine Business Hub. The goal here is to show you how these data apps deliver actionable insights to end users. They are able to interact with the data science solutions, with the workflows, without getting in touch with their complexity through a nice interface, and then they can get their insights more independently. They don't have to rely on the data scientists that create the workflows constantly in order to get their insights. Data apps provide a flexible and interactive user interface for scalable and shareable data science pipelines. From simple ones that, for example, just read files and export files to more complex ones that count on sophisticated machine learning models and visualizations, for example. I am Aline Bessa, and I am a data scientist here at NIME, working for the evangelism team. And today I am joined by my colleague, Emilio Silvestri, a data scientist also here at NIME, also working for the evangelism team. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar and see you in a bit. Emilio and I spent a lot of time creating didactic materials to explain data science concepts and how they can be implemented and automated with nine products in a low code or no code fashion. Before we start this presentation, just a little bit of housekeeping. As you can see in our interface, there are a few options. One of them is the live chat right here. It's a tab and we encourage you to use it to um, interact with other participants. You can post, for example, where you're joining us from in this chat. And right by it, you have the Q&A tab in which you can ask questions to the NIME team and to Emilio and I. These questions will be answered live or during the Q&A session right at the end of this presentation. Finally, if you're having streaming problems, we highly recommend that you use Google Chrome or Firefox as the web browser. You should get a better experience with these two browsers. If you're still having problems, try to refresh your browser, or if the Wi-Fi is a bit poor, try to use a cable internet connection instead, maybe check your cookie settings. And if none of this works, try seeing this presentation on private browser mode. It's lighter and sometimes the streaming works better like that. And if you get lost, you will see that there are a few options uh, on, on this interface, reception, stage and contact us just click on stage and you should go back to the stream okay now as for our presentation uh we are going to have an introduction to data apps and nine business hubs i will be giving this introduction for, for, from now until 5 20 germany time after that i will hand this to emilio emilio will give a demo from 520 to 545, showing you how to build the data app for the problem that I'm going to introduce step by step, and also how to deploy it on Nine Business Hub. And right after that, we are going to have a 15 minute Q&A session from 545 to 6 p.m. Now, without further ado, let's start this presentation. I know that a lot of you are already familiar with Nine, but for the new folks that have joined us today, let me just give you a quick rundown of some of our features, functionalities, and how our products cover uh, all of the data science lifecycle. So here at the left, under number one, we have Nine Analytics Platform, which is free, always open, and it's the tool with which you are going to build the data science solutions, the workflows. NIME Analytics platform is very intuitive. It uses a visual programming paradigm. And basically what you do is that you drag and drop nodes onto the workflow editor of this platform. 
And by connecting, you create these workflows, these pipelines that correspond to the data science solution that you're building. If you are not working alone, if you're working with a team of data scientists, for example, and each one specializes on a different area, maybe they can build separate parts of this workflow, work on different parts of this workflow, and then combine the work as a team. And for that, we have uh, both Nime Hub teams and Nime Business Hub. With these two products, you can work collaboratively and privately on the creation of solutions. Nine Business Hub, however, goes a few steps further. Um, it also allows you to deploy this solution. So you create a solution and you want to make it public for end users uh, to interact with that. You can deploy it as a data app, which is what we are going to be talking about today, or maybe as a service with a REST API. So in order to deploy the solutions that you create on Nime Analytics platform, uh, you use Nime Business Hub. You can also monitor the solutions, see how they're performing, how they're scaling, how they're being used with Nine Business Hub. And finally here, point four, with Nine Business Hub, workflows and components and other items that are created with Nine Analytics platform can be shared and reused across your entire organization. So it makes for collaborative work, uh, it makes collaborative work much more efficient and organized. Uh, one thing that I would also like to mention is that Nime has a very thriving and dynamic open source community. We have thousands of contributors and contributions coming all of the time. And because of that, we are always adapting to the newest technology. We are, the world of data science is always changing. And so we are always adapting to this fast world. Now let's talk a little bit about data apps per se. And to this end, let's consider a practical problem in the context of a company. Let's see if this motivates you about the importance of data apps. So here, right at the left, we have Claudia B. Claudia B is the CEO of a supermarket chain in the United States named ABC. ABC has five warehouses, you can see here at the right. And Claudia is a bit worried about a problem, uh, which is named a stockout problem. Stockout happens when the customer orders exceed the available inventory for a specific item. So basically, Claudia wants to know which of these five warehouses is more likely to suffer from stockout problems, what type of item in her supermarket is more likely to suffer from the stockout problems, are these items critical? Are they slow moving ones? They arrive late, you know, the, the supply chain is a bit slow for those items. So this is what she's interested in. Not only in knowing uh, which warehouses and item types are having stockout problems, but which ones are likely to have a stockout problem, say within the period of a month. So there is a, a, a predictive component as well, right? She would like to see a stockout forecasting as well, not only to actually see the problems, but a forecasting as well. So she talks to Henry here in the middle. Henry is a data scientist who works for ABC. And Henry decides that the best solution for Claudia would be to provide her with an interactive interface that allows her to filter through warehouse and item type to check the stockout situation. And it would also be nice to create a predictive model that allows for the stockout forecasting uh, separated by warehouse and by item type. This would allow Claudia and her other teams to prepare ahead of time for stockouts, besides dealing with the stockouts that are already happening. So Henry recently upskilled himself with some cutting edge machine learning concepts, and he created a very nice workflow that caters to Claudia's needs. So it does have a predictive model. It does separate uh, the stockout problems from the stockout forecasting, everything separated by warehouse, by item type. He creates a workflow with Nime Analytics platform that you can see here in the middle of the slide, a bit 
complex for Claudia, perhaps, because Claudia doesn't have time to really learn how to read workflows, or she, she's not really interested in what kind of machine learning technique Henry used. Claudia is interested in the quality of the forecasting. She's interested in being able to filter through warehouse and item type very quickly to see where the problems are or where they can be. So ideally, the complexity of this workflow should be hidden from her. And with a data app, uh, if, if this workflow here in the middle is deployed as a data app, Claudia will end up having access to this dashboard here, hiding the complexity of the workflow and allowing her to interactively filter through different options and get insights, insights that are going to help her prevent stockout problems or act quickly. So with Nine Business Hub, which is the place in which this workflow will be deployed as a data app, Claudia can access Nine Business Hub, her account through a login, and then just run the data apps that she has access to, this one included, and consume the model's predictions, consume the filtering options, and then gather her insights very quickly without having to see the actual workflow without having to interact with the underlying workflow that Henry built. So after building this workflow in I'm Analytics platform using widget nodes that allow for filtering options and interactivity, machine learning models and components for stockout forecasting, and also visualization nodes and components that allow for the creation of nice boards, Henry deploys it on Nine Business Hub through a web interface that you can see here at the left. This is one of the best things about Nine Business Hub. Everything happens on the browser, the deployment, uh, the monitoring. So Henry gets this workflow, which you can see here in this image, and deploys it as a data app. Remember that this workflow is built with Nama Analytics platform. So it uses a no code, low code framework. And then it is deployed with this really nice and simple browser interface, which is the interface of Nine Business Hub. As a data app, you can see here the option, the deployment option. And when Henry is deploying that, he makes sure that this data app is visible to Claudia. So when Claudia logs on to her Nine Business Hub account, she can see which data apps are visible for her, and then she can click and interact with them. Note that Claudia doesn't have to ask Henry to run this data app for her when she wants to get the insights. It's much more independent, right? She can just go and run the data app herself. She doesn't have to you know, talk to Henry all the time that she wants to have a forecast. So this makes for a more efficient uh, management of the stockout problem as well. Emilio is going to tell you um, how to build this workflow and how to deploy it in our demo, how this can be uploaded to a space online business hub. So he is going to tell how this works in practice very soon. And just to broaden things a bit, here is another example of a data app deployed on Nine Business Hub. Here at the right, you have a workflow with the widget nodes for interactivity. Uh, and the goal here, the, the problem that is being solved here is an application is being created so that engineers can evaluate the condition of different machines. So they want to filter through different types of condition. They want to filter through different types of machines, uh, but they do not necessarily want to be asking a data scientist to generate a report with that or they do not necessarily want to interact with the underlying workflow, it is much better for them to have this interface to see uh, the plots for the machine conditions and filter through the different options. And they can do that because this workflow was deployed as a data app. As they filter through different options and select different things on the interface, a few parts of the workflow, the underlying workflow are rerun. So, this is very nice too. It's not only interactive, but also only a few parts of the dashboard, which is, corresponds to the workflow, are uh, re-executed for every 
execution and that they never have to interact with the underlying workflow. So now that you're a bit more familiar with data apps and hopefully convinced of how useful they are, especially when it comes to including end users in the process, giving actionable insights to them, let's talk a little bit about Nine Business Hub, our new product. It's a product that allows you to deploy these um, data science solutions that are created with Nine Analytics platform. So your workflows are put into production. And as I said, this deployment can be uh, as a data app or as a service, but here we're focusing on data apps. Regardless of deployment, uh, Nine Business Hub allows for different stakeholders, data scientists and users, data engineers to work together as teams. Here in this slide, you can see that we have a company with say five different teams on Nine Business Hub, IT team, production team, solutions, marketing, finance, and then you can have people with a different background, different stakeholders together in a same team. And this team is going to have a bunch of different projects and these projects can be separated and organized into spaces. Spaces are these cubes that you see here. When they have a little lock, it means that the space is private, meaning that they're only accessible by members of that team. If they do not have a lock, they're public, members of other teams can also read the contents of those spaces. And what is it that a space contains? Workflows for a specific project, components that are created um, for a specific project. Components are like nodes that you create with Nime. They're configurable, uh, but they encapsulate a functionality, right? They're built of more nodes in a way, all in a low, low code way. And the cool thing about Nine Business Hub, besides this structure, right, that allows people to work together in a way that is more organized as teams with the spaces, one of the cool things is that all of the work that lies inside the spaces is versionable. So this also allows for a more responsible and efficient development, right? If a bug is introduced in a workflow, it's easy to trace back, go back to a different version, recover a version. Um, Emilio is going to talk a little bit about that as well. And these workflows that are in these spaces can be deployed. We already talked about that. Deployed as a data app, for example. They can be shared with other end users. They can be shared with people within a same team or people from other teams. And all of this is done through your browser. There is no need to install anything extra. It's everything through the browser. And Emilio is going to explain how um, nine business hub and data apps connect in the demo. Now, just to tie back to our stock out example and tell you a bit more about the advantages of nine business hub. Uh, when Henry was creating this data app because he had an account on nine business hub and he was working with a team, he could leverage the work of some of his colleagues to create this data app to create this application for Claudia. He navigated uh, in, into one of the spaces and found out that there were some components and some workflows that could be adapted and repurposed to create that stock out dashboard for Claudia. So because people work in teams, sharing resources in a way that is responsible, versionable, uh, they can also reuse things and build new solutions more quickly. Also, when he shared that solution with Claudia, when he deployed and shared that with Claudia, he selected what version of that workflow he was sharing with Claudia. So for example, say that Claudia was in a hurry and she told Henry, look, even if the predictive model for the stock out forecasting is not perfect, I would rather have access to this sooner than later. So Henry creates uh, this workflow with a simpler predictive model, creates a version for that, and shares this version with Claudia. And then Claudia can start interacting with that and taking action. In the meantime, Henry is working on a more sophisticated version of that workflow that uses a more complex machine learning model. So you have two versions of the same workflow of the same uh, solution. One is already in production with Claudia already using it and one is still in development and everything is done with no conflict in a very organized way. Okay, um, enough of slides now. I think it's time for you to see this demo. 
So I would like to hand this presentation to my colleague, Emilio, now. Thank you. Thank you, Aline, for the nice theoretical introduction. And But now I think it's time to see more practical stuff, actually. And what I want to show you now is, uh, first of all, a quick tour of Nine Business Hub, because you have heard about it, but let's see what actually what it actually is in practice. Then I want to show you what a data app is, but from the user point of view. So in this case, from Claudia, from our CEO, what she will see uh, from this data app. And then we will do a step back and see how to create such a data app uh, from a workflow in Nine Analytics platform. So let's start with our Nine Business Hub tour. I connected to, I opened my browser and I already put uh, hubdemo.nine.com, which is the URL of uh, the business app that I want to connect to. And I end up in this page. If this looks already familiar to you, it's because it is very, very similar to another product of ours, which is the Nine Community Hub. And Nine Community Hub is the space where all the community, all the people from the Nine community can upload their workflow, their components, can share knowledge within the community. And the difference, um, actually, Nine Nine Business Hub and Nine Community Hub share the same technology, but the difference the difference is that Nine Business Hub has some more functionalities in, and it is supposed to be used within an organization. So with Nine Community Hub, people from the community share their work. With Nine Business Hub, people from the same organization share their work. The other thing that I want to show you about this page is the concept of teams that Alini already introduced. If I go up here, this is my, um, my profile in Nine Business Hub, and I see that I am part of a couple of teams. I'm part of the demo team and the marketing team. Let's click on this one, and I see that I have access to a few spaces of this team. Some of them are public, like this one, and some of them are private, and only people within this team will have access to, to those workflows and those data. Let's open the evangelist space. And in here, in this space, I've already uploaded the workflow that I want to show you today, like this one. This is the workflow that we will work on today. It's a uh, supply, supply chain dashboard stockouts workflow, which creates a data app that shows the, the stockouts of the last month. Uh, again, this is probably already familiar to you because it's the same visualization that you see from the Nine Community Hub, so just the preview of the workflow. But what you have, you have a few more um, buttons up here that we will see in a minute. And if you scroll down to deployments, you can see that this workflow has been already deployed as a data app. What does it mean? It means that this data app is now accessible by the people who I wanted to, uh, to be accessible, so the people that I share it to. And in my case, my CEO, Claudia, will go here, go to deployment, click on run open, and from her browser, she will see such a dashboard. She will see such a page. So she will see the title, then a little guide that I put there from her, because probably she the first time she doesn't know what she's looking at. And then you can see that she can select the location from different warehouses, for example, Memphis warehouse, different categories for items, and every time she sees a different uh, number of stockouts by, by category and the stockouts per month according to the selection. Also, my CEO asked me to put some predictions there because she wants to know how many stockouts she, she can expect this month for, the, for each warehouse for each category. So every time that I change, I get a different prediction. And also I wrote here a message like, hey, this is a good prediction or this is a bad prediction. Um, do, do something because things are going, are going wrong. So again, this is from Claudia point of view, from the end user point of view. That's everything that they will see, just a browser page that they can interact with and it can be uh, as complex as it is. But all the actual complexity, so all the actual uh, machine learning that is behind, all the actual... Um, data processing that is behind this workflow, that is behind this page, is hidden. It's in a workflow that the end user doesn't have to see necessarily. Um, 
So everything is hidden and uh, the actual user only interact with the browser page. Let's now do finally a step back and see what this complexity is. So let's see what is the workflow behind this data app. And for that, let me close this page and go back to Nime Analytics platform finally, where we can start building our dashboard workflow. For that, you can see, so let's start very simple. Let's just execute the data preparation. They've already put there for you. And let me show you with which data we are gonna work today. It's again, very simple data. We have uh, different months of the 2021 and 2022, different locations for warehouses, and then three categories, critical items, regular items, and slow moving items. And for each combination of uh, warehouse location and category, we have the number of stockouts that we registered that month for every, yeah, for every entry. Again, we also have the, uh, them aggregated by all the warehouses, but as you can see, it's very, very simple data. But let's see how we can structure them in a way that um, our Claudia is happy to, to look at them. So let's close this. And now I want to point out that here, those data end up in a component. I assume that most of you are already a little bit familiar with, uh, a little bit familiar with Nymalytics platform and the concept of components, but for the very new ones, a component is uh, just a set of nodes. It's just um, an embedding of a sub workflow. So Nime works with nodes. Those are the, our units for our uh, for our workflow. And inside this uh, component, which actually looks like a node, but inside this, there is a sub workflow doing other things. So if we now right click, click on component and open in a new page, we see that there is a whole world of nodes inside this component. And it's actually a bunch of nodes doing other, other stuff. The good thing about components, actually one of the one of the cool things about components is that they embed, um, is that they can create composite queues. What does it mean? It means that if we put a blue node inside there and blue nodes are nodes that create a view, then we can, we can group them inside the component view. Let me show you it quickly. I have a bar chart in here and this bar chart is blue. So it creates a view and I can right click and click on execute and open views and this will display the bar chart view. So the stockouts by category like this. Now, besides this, we also have this other widget in here that is also blue and another widget in here. Since those nodes are inside a component, if I now go back and execute this component and then open the interactive view, I can see all of them grouped together into the same page. And this is what we call the interactive view or the composite view of the component, where all the nodes that create a view are grouped together to create a, yeah, a composite view. And this is actually what will be displayed as a data app in a minute on Nine Business Hub. Um, so I've already, as you've seen, uh, as you've seen, I've already put some of the views in there. Let's now go back inside the component and start populating it with a bit more complex visualizations. I go back inside the component and the first thing that I want to do is to let the user select the warehouse location. So to let the user browse according to the different warehouses and see how the stockouts are working there. For that, I want to use a widget node, which is in the node repository down here under workflow abstractions widgets. Nemanetics platform offers a whole set of widgets where the user can input data, can select, can filter, etc. Uh, what we will use today is a single selection widget. And we will configure it in this way. We will put a label like um, select to get the user. We can put the label like select warehouse location. Then I want to create a drop down menu with the possible choices of the different warehouses. So in this case, I have all, then I have Memphis, et cetera, et cetera. So those are all the choices that I want to give them. And now let's see what, the, what view this widget creates. I click open view and it's 
as expected, a simple drop-down menu where the user can select something. Now, the cool thing about widgets is that we let the user select it, and then we can use the, uh, the selection inside the workflow. So for that, what I select here will be output as a flow variable by the widget. And now I can just add, for example, a row filter in here to filter my data according to user selection. I just have to configure it, test the warehouse location column, and use the flow variable produced by the widget. Now the row filter will have in output only the filter data for the selected entry. So in this case, all was the default selection, and this is what I have. Now, if I provide this to the bar chart, what I expect is that this bar chart will be filtered according to my user selection. Let's try it out and execute the composite view, the component to see the composite view. Now I have this select warehouse location in here, and I can select the different warehouses, for example, but nothing is happening, actually, because there is one crucial thing missing, which is re-execution. If you really want to use um, user selection inside your workflows, then you have to enable, uh, inside your dashboards, then you have to enable component, uh, you have to enable re-execution. And one way to enable re-execution is to do it directly into the widget. So let me close this and go back inside. Let me open again the widget configuration. And here notice that you have a tab called re-execution. You have to enable this re-execution on widget value change. Now, if I click OK, and let me zoom in a little bit, you see that the widget got this little icon up here. And it means that re-execution on value change is enabled. Now, if I go back and open the composite view, I can see that selecting Memphis, for example, changes the bar chart. And then I select another thing, and I get a new bar chart <clears throat> according to the filtered value. So keep it in mind, interaction is enabled by re-execution. And one way is to do it directly into the, into the widget. So if you select something different, then everything gets re-executed. And when I say that everything gets re-executed, uh, let me do this, uh, just this note. It means that everything that comes downstream, so all the nodes that come after this node, gets re-executed. And finally, the information in here that the user input as a flow variable goes inside here. And finally, you get the updated bar chart. That's what re-execution does, basically. OK, we have done our first um, improvement to our data app. Let's now go on. Let's skip all those nodes that I put there already for you. The, here is another uh, single selection widget that does some more filtering, et cetera. What I want to show you now is how to add a line plot. <clears throat> so how to add another visualization for the user. And in this case, let me look for line plot. And as you can see, we have many, uh, we have like three options for line plots in the, in the node repository. What I want to use today is the line plot labs. Why? Because it's new and because it's super cool. Let me show you like this and let me open the configuration. As you can see, it has a fairly uh, new and good looking configuration window different from the other ones. And what I can see here is that I can execute and see a preview of what this node will produce as a view. So according to my selection in here, if I select another horizontal dimension, for example, then I can already get a preview of the view produced by the, by the node. In this case, let me remove this one and let's add a title like stock outs per month, for example. And this is uh, updated right away. Those are view, uh, they are still in labs, so they are still under development, uh, but you can still have them, you can still use them. You can already actually, you can already use them by downloading and installing the, the labs extensions of Nime Analytics platform. Um, okay, so now I added a new view. Let's see how it looks in the composite view of the component. 
So let's reopen again this. And as you can see, I have the title, the widget here, and down here in this kind of default position, I have the stockouts per month line plot. Uh, that's cool, but what I don't like is that this view takes all the all the space down here, and I would actually like it to be aligned uh, at the bar chart. So I would actually like to appear small here under the bar chart. How can I do it? How can I rearrange things inside the composite view? For that, I have to go again back inside my component and click on this icon up here, which opens the node usage and layout uh, window. And in here, as you can see, I can organize and arrange all the single views of the component. And in this case, I want to put the line plot right down the bar chart and close inside those two um, those two columns. Now, if I click Finish and I open again the interactive view, here we go. The line plot has been aligned under the bar chart, and everything looks more uh, looks tidier. Let's close this, go back inside here because we are not done. What we want to do as last thing to this data app is to add our uh, is to add some predictions. So to add a number of the, the number of the predicted, predicted stock outs for the current month according to historical data. And as soon as I say prediction, you can already imagine that this has to do with some machine learning, some deep learning model there. So we would have to train some model uh, able to give us this number to, to show to our, uh, to our boss. Luckily, uh, since we also don't have time <laughs> to do all this thing, luckily, a colleague of mine I know that has already worked on something similar a few weeks ago, and she told me that she has created a component that actually does stockouts predictions according to historical data. And she told me that she has shared this component on the Nine Business Hub. So since I want to reuse her work, I don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. Let me go to Nine Business Hub, which is here, and let me search for uh, stockouts in here. As you can see, I have already a result, component predict stockouts, and I can browse it and see that the description says that this component predicts the number of stockouts of the current month based on the last 10 months. Luckily, exactly what I wanted. So I want to reuse this component inside my workflow. And to do that, I can just do as if it was the community hub. Probably this is a thing that you have already done many times. You can take this component, drag and drop it into the workflow right away. So I'm now reusing something that has been shared, in this case, not by some community member, but since it was on Business Hub, by one of my colleagues, one of my teammates. And then I provide, uh, let's make it run. I provide the data. I just execute it like this. And let's see what this component outputs. Surprisingly, all that we need. <laughs> so it outputs a prediction of the stockouts according to the data that we give. And plus, it also outputs a mean stockout. So uh, this is a number. This is just the average stockouts of the last months. And we will use it as a, um, as a control value later. But now what we want to do is to output this number, so this 80. On 28, um, we want to output it inside the, um, the data app. For that, let me look for a table row to variable. And after that, right away, a text output widget. OK. In the text output widget, I can enter some HTML. And I can just write down like predicted stockouts for the current month. And let's be fancy with some HTML. And let's add the prediction stockouts flow variable in there. Yep. And this text output widget now will show something like this predicts stockouts and then the number. Let's again uh, rearrange it 
because we want to show it in the right side. So text output widget in here under this, inside this column. Let me save. And if I now see the interactive view, that's already, that's already working. So that's already showing something. As soon as I change something in here, I get a different number because the historical data, of course, are, um, are different. Now, uh, I think I like this version of this data app. Let's save it and let's deploy it on nine. Let's upload it and then let's deploy it on nine business app. For that, I have to go to the nine explorer in here, locate my workflow. And then I want to upload it to Nine Business Hub. So I right click, click to upload to server or hub. I will then select where it uh, where it should be stored. In this case, here is fine. <clears throat> and in a minute, it appears in um, it appears in here. Now I can also browse to that in here evangelist here is the one that i've just uploaded the the workflow that i've just created and uploaded and the first thing that i can do is to check whether this workflow runs on nine business app for that i can click on run and create an ad hoc execution it means that it will just take the workflow as it is and then let it run on nine business app like this run it just opens a new tab and here I can explore it and see, oh, if I select Memphis, this changes. To me, it looks like everything, uh, everything is working, more or less. Everything is working. So now we have done the ad hoc execution. Let me go back to Nime, um, to the business hub, to the, to the workflow page of the business hub, because what I actually want to do is not to let it run every time like this from here, but I want to create a deployment. So I want to actually uh, create a data app that is always there available to be run by every time, uh, by every, uh, every person I share it with. For that, the first thing that I have to do is to version my work. It means that I have to create kind of a snapshot of this, um, of this workflow inside the space. And for that, I can click on workflow history, show complete space history, and since Nine Business Hub version is by space, I can create a new space history. So I have some version changes. In this case, the workflow that I've just uploaded in this space, I can create version and just give it a name like version one of the demo workflow. So I click OK. This work has been uh, versioned. And now finally, I can deploy it. I can click on deploy. And then I have different choices. The first one, I could deploy this workflow. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I could deploy this workflow as a data app, but I could also, for example, schedule its execution at uh, specific times or make it as a service to be called by REST APIs. But let's not take, uh, let's not make things too complicated, and let's stick to the to the original point of create of creating a new data app. So for that. In the deployment, let's click on Create Data App. And in this panel, I can give a deployment name, for example, a demo, a demo data app. Like this, I can, I can select which version of the workflow I want to deploy, in this, in this case, uh, version one, because it's the only one that I have, and then click Create. It has been created. Now I can scroll down. And I see under deployments, a new data app has been created in here. Now, finally, I can right click on here. I can click on the three dots, man manage access. And I can share it, for example, with Alina. Now in her deployments, she will see this data app and she will be able to run it. Now, actually, I would like to call Alina one second on stage because I would ask her if she wants to be my, um, my CEO for now, if she wants to play the Claudia. Alini, can you come on, space, um, on stage, please? So Hi, back everybody. So yeah, <laughs> if I were Claudia, uh, I think that I would. What do you think about this, this data app? Yeah, what, I mean, um, 
Can you, you do you understand what's going on? What would you add? I can understand what's going on. It's possible to filter exactly how Claudia wants it. But this number, yeah, this number to the right is a bit obscure as is, right? I would really appreciate seeing a message explaining what this number is. I mean, should I be worried about this number? Is this number okay? Okay. So like a message, like we, we've quickly shown before. Exactly. Press, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. We can create a new version of this data app for you. Thank you, Claudia. Um, now, so let me go. So my CEO asks for some improvements there. Let's go back to Nymalytics platform and try to add it. So what she wants is that she doesn't only want to see the number there, but she also wants to see a message saying, hey, this number is OK, or no, this number is too high. Do something. For that, what I had in mind is to use the output of this component. Because if you remember, this component creates a prediction, but we also have a control value, which is the mean of the last 10 months. So what I want to do is to say that, hey, if the means is, uh, if the prediction is higher than the mean, then, uh, then this, is, um, this is bad. Otherwise, everything is fine. It's a very simple rule, but uh, this is all we all we get, all we got. So for that, let me create a um, rule with a rule engine, rule engine variable, and let's use those two numbers to create a simple rule. In this case, if the prediction is below the mean, then give me zero. Otherwise, give me one. And let's call this alarm. Why do I want this to display uh, zero to, to output zero and one actually? Because I'm going to use one of my favorite node of Nymalytics platform, which is the case switch node. In the case switch, what I want to do is to add, first of all, add the flow variable port and then provide the flow variable created by the rule engine. And now in the configuration, I can select which port should be activated according to the flow variable uh, value. So in the alarm, and that's why if the alarm flow variable is zero, then this port will be activated. If the flow variable is one, then this other port will be activated. And what can we put inside those port? Uh, after those ports, another text output widget, actually two text output widgets. In the first one, we can add more HTML and saying, again, pretty big, so she knows, um, everything is okay. Like this. Actually, let's add some CSS. Like this. And then in the other widget, we will say that uh, in a red message, uh, stockouts are alarming, do something. So now let's rearrange this in the view and put them again on the right side. So they appear where we want them to appear. And let's see locally if this worked. So now we have um, a number here and down to it. I have the message that Alina wanted, that Claudia wanted, actually. And it changes according to the value that is that are produced, the value that are predicted. Now we have a new version of this data app with the messages. Let's save this and let's deploy this new version to my business app. So first of all, let's upload it as before, right click, upload, and let's overwrite what is already there. And now I can move back to my business app, to this workflow page, and I can create a new version of my workflow. For that again, workflow history, space history, I see the unversion changes, which is the new version that I just uploaded. Create a version and add a name version with messages. 
this. And finally, I can click deploy data app again. I can give my data app again a name like Stockouts version two, for example. And then here, now I can select uh, between the, the two versions of the, this workflow that I had. And in this case, let's select the version with um, the, the version with messages. So the latest one, let's click create. And finally, if I scroll down under deployments, I can see that I have two data apps. The first one is the one that I've created before, demo data app, the one without messages. And then I have the second one, Stockouts version two. Then now I can share with Alini, for example, and as soon as she run it, she will see, she will be happy because she will see what she wanted, this message here, uh, which is more informative than before. Um, now, <clears throat> you understand why this uh, versioning and creating uh, different deployments of the type um, is actually important because for example, this was a simple use case that I just added some little functionality. But imagine that I was doing major changes of my of my workflow, and um, I can I don't want it to be to be deployed and to destroy, for example, what my boss is uh, is checking daily. So for that, it's very easy to to just play around with um, with versions and with different deployments and just give access to what we want to uh, we want to expose basically to the to the to the last user. So remember, versioning and deployments are uh, very powerful, actually, when uh, developing data, data apps and when, when deploying in general in the in Nine Business Hub. Okay, so that was the end of my of my demo. We have still ten minutes for the for the Q and A, so I would call Alini back. And actually, I think there is also I also want to ask you while you uh, while we prepare and while we we go for the Q&A. So you have seen a little bit how data apps work. Do you have, if you have any idea of some data app that would be useful for you, or I don't know, something that comes to that comes to your mind when thinking about data apps. And if you have, please write them down in the in the chat. So maybe if we have to do another webinar like this, we have some more uh, some other interesting ideas that we can that we can present. Uh, okay, back to you, Alini. All right. So uh, just quickly, very quickly before the Q&A, yeah. we are having the Nime Spring Summit in Berlin from April 17 to April 19. You can see here the link to read more about it and also register. Uh, you can expect six different trainings. One of them on the first day is a new course that we have on how to deploy data apps. So it's like a much more complex and extended version of this webinar that we're giving today. Lime Spring Summit has demos, keynotes, user talks, workshops for you to get more hands-on on a few different topics, on-site and virtual breakouts, networking. It would be really great if you could participate. Here's an agenda overview uh, with the trainings and the keynotes. And also before the Q&A, please stay in touch with us. There is a tab on the interface that you're seeing named Contact Us. You can write to us there or you can get in touch with us uh, either on Nime Hub, here's the address, or on our forum. Uh, we also have a few social media profiles, both on LinkedIn and on Twitter. And we also have a YouTube channel, Nime TV, uh, write to us there, leave a comment, um, connect with us. We would love to be in touch with you. Uh, now, for the Q&A, thank you very much for staying with us all the way to now. Uh, before that, I would like to introduce Jim Folgut, our co-CTO. So is Jim here? And of course, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hi, Eleni. Jim. Hi, Emilio. Thanks for having me on. That was, was a yeah. great presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. So let me go through a few questions here um, that we got. One of them... Um, how do you, for Emilio, how do you manage the position of a widget in the dashboard? Uh, yep, yeah. Uh, how do you do it in the node usage and layout? Basically, if you are, so a dashboard is created, a page of the, your data app is created by the component and you can rearrange everything that is inside the component 
using the node usage and layout, which is the little icon that is on top when you are inside a component. And from there, you can change the position of the widget, also the dimension, you can stretch it, you can make it smaller, bigger, uh, according to how you want it to, to appear. So yes, short Thanks, answer, Emilio. no use and layout. Uh, is this, has this one already been replied? I, I haven't seen it. Can Business Hub be embedded in other websites? For example, a retail company sharing the dashboard on their corporate website. Uh, so, so the answer would be yes. That that can be done. Um, any it, and you, we do have a, like a special edition of Business Hub. We call it Enterprise Hub. Uh, that that could support that. So that would be something we would probably have to um, talk about it. That specific license licensing to let to allow people outside of your organization to use Business Hub. But that is possible. Also with Business Hub, uh, you can create links to uh, data apps. And so that way you can actually then take that URL, you can embed it in you know, an email and messaging and Slack, whatever it may be, you can embed it in, in your website internally also. So that would be an easy way to share data apps with people who like know nothing about NIME, have never developed a workflow, but they can use those data apps and um, it, it, without having to go to the Hub website, right? Uh, okay. Uh, I think we have time to one last question. So send this. I'll give this one to... Jim again, how to manage Python environments in Business Hub? Is it possible for users to install new packages there? It, it is possible. So if you look at Nine Analytics Platform in the latest release, it comes with uh, Python embedded within it already. So that's really great to get people started. But if you want to manage that environment and, and have uh, your own libraries added, the easiest way to do that is to use Conda. So Conda can be used directly by the analytics platform. You can set up your environment, add any libraries that you need. And then also within the business hub, uh, within the executors actually run the workflows for you. Uh, you can specify what kind of environment to use and they can be in, in installed with a particular, whatever version of you know, Python you need. So that is very, very much able to, to do that. Okay. Um, I see that we have hit one hour. Do we have time for one more maybe? I think we, still have, we still have five minutes, probably. No? Ah, okay. I was seeing one hour. All right. So um, another one about data apps. That this is only for you, Emilio. Is it possible to have multiple pages in one data app, like in a Power BI report? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, yes, actually, in the demo, um, I didn't show it because it was just a single page data app but you're not limited to that. So as soon as you add more components in your workflow, so as you remember, I had just a couple of nodes and then one component and then created one single data app. But as soon as you add a component after that one, then you will get the second page and then you can get the fourth, the fifth, et cetera. And um, yes, you can combine all the pages that you want one after the other. Cool. Thanks, Emilio. So I'll give another, a last one. And after that, all of the other questions will be posted on I'm forum with their respective answers. But the last one, this one goes to you, Jim. Is Nine Business Hub a paid service? So today, Business Hub is not a paid service in the sense of being software as a service. Uh, we do have Community Hub, which is basically a business hub uh, that's open to the community. That's at hub.nime.com. And there we do offer a paid service called Teams. So that would allow you to collaborate with, uh, with uh, teammates uh, within the community hub in a private way so other people couldn't see it. Uh, also, we're, we're going to start supporting execution uh, within the community hub uh, this year. And so that would be another paid service uh, that, we, you know, that we will support. And eventually we'll have Business Hub that would be sold as software as a service uh, within a managed service. But that's... Um, yeah, that's probably not going to happen this year, but but that, that is definitely in our plans. Great. Um, so, yeah, I think we have two minutes still, at least here on my watch. So, good. I thought we had less time. Uh, another question then, this one also goes to Jim. Can I be integrated with other platforms such as Power BI? Yes, it can. And in fact, for Power BI, we actually have a document uh, within the uh, NIME docs, docs.nime.com. If you go there and search for it, you'll find it. It's a user guide on how to integrate uh, NIME with Power BI. We also support integrations with lots of other uh, software products. Cool. 
And this one was a short answer, so another one, this one to Emilio. <laughs> Can the visualizations be exported in SVG format? Oh, that's an interesting one also. Um... Yes, you can export, you can create, um, so from the from the node, then you can create, you have the option to create the image, and then from that you have to write the image to a file. I am not 100% sure that you can create uh, it in SVG. I'm probably JP, JPEG for sure, but probably also uh, SVG should be, should be possible down there. I would have to double check the format. But for sure, you can create an image out of uh, out of a node. Great, thanks, Emilio. And with that, um, to stick to time, I think we can wrap it up. But as I said, there will be a thread on Nime Hub specifically for this webinar with all of the questions that you that you asked there with the corresponding answers. So stay tuned. Um, thank you very much for spending this hour with us. Thank you very much, Jim and Emilio and all of the NIME team that helped us organize this webinar. Uh, this means a lot to us, your presence. So I hope we can see you soon. And I hope that you learn a thing or two about data apps and NIME Business Hub. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alimi, and thank you all the attendees and Jim also. <laughs> thank you. Bye. See you, folks. Bye. -bye. See you.